so many people are trying to build this Swiss army knife, one size fits all that fits every mission. And the aviation market is just not designed that way. It's a very energy intensive and energy critical situation. You really have to design an aircraft that's suited for the mission that you're trying to fulfill. You're listening to the Drone Radio Show podcast, the show about drones and the people who use them for business, fun, and research. Hosted by Randy Goers. Hello, everyone. This is Randy Goers, and welcome to the Drone Radio Show podcast, episode 181. How far away are we from our own personal flying machine? If you ask today's guest, he would say it's already here. John Manning is founder and director of development for Electrofly, a company that is changing the way multi-rotor innovators look at energy consumption, flight times, and payload capability. The company is on a mission to revolutionize personal and cargo transportation using drones. In August, they successfully flight tested a prototype of a personal flying drone. John has a long history in aviation, having grown up with RC model planes, graduating with a degree in aviation technology from Utah State University, launching several companies, and becoming an international commercial pilot. In this edition of the Drone Radio Show, John talks about the Electrofly personal flying drone, plans for cargo transportation, and how those innovations will transform personal transportation and package and supply delivery. But before we hear from John, I want to thank those of you who are supporting my funding campaign. Now you have the option of making a one-time donation in any amount by going to DroneRadioShow.com slash donate. Whether it's a dollar, $100, or much more, you can help defray the cost of production and keep the podcast going and growing. And if you'd like to make a monthly contribution, you can still go to Patreon.com slash DroneRadioShow. So let's hear how one company with the dream to produce passenger and cargo drones is working to make that happen with John Manning of Electrofly. Let's pick up the interview where I asked John to introduce himself. My name is uh, John Manning. I'm one of the co-founders of Electrofly. Electrofly is a company that is based on the idea of making multi-rotors more efficient so that they can fly longer and carry more weight. We have embodied those innovations in a single person, personal flying machine. So is the goal of the company to create personal flying machines for everyday use? That's the vein that we're most interested in is the uh, personal flying machine market. But certainly with the mission of the company to increase lifting capability and range of multi-rotor aircraft, there are definitely other paths to go down with these innovations. Certainly things like package delivery would be most obvious and agriculture. Any kind of multi-rotor aircraft that has to carry a little bit more weight and has to be efficient moving forward, those are the applications that it would be best suited for. Before we get into the personal vehicles, can you talk about what you're doing to improve the lifting capability of the drones? Primarily what we've done is we've removed our dependence or reduced our dependence on batteries by replacing some of our batteries with fuel. So it's a hybrid electric system because typically the Achilles heel of these air taxis are the batteries, the weight of the batteries. They're just not energy dense enough. And so by replacing batteries with fuel or to an extent, then we're able to increase the onboard energy density. And the second primary innovation that increases the range and payload of our multi-rotor is the fact that we use wings to support the majority of the lift of the craft. Obviously, when you're standing on a pillar of thrust, you can imagine a Harrier jet, you know, hovering there in the middle of the air. That's very energy intensive versus that same Harrier jet in forward flight, which is much less energy intensive. And that's large part due to the efficiency of a wing versus thrust systems. So will it take off like an airplane going horizontal or is it a vertical takeoff? No, uh, we've retained all of the capabilities of a multi-rotor aircraft, but just increase the payload and range. 
How about the engines? Anything unique in that area? Well, we do have a uh, turbine engine on board. So yes, that's unique to the multi-copter world. As far as we know, no one else has put on a, a jet engine on a multi-copter. Is that providing the horizontal thrust? It provides both horizontal thrust and vertical thrust, but primarily vertical thrust. It's not an ideal situation. It's a turbojet, and turbojets are still not ideal for hovering, even relative to batteries, but it's a step in that direction. As you said, the first goal is to develop a personal flying drone. Now, you had one at Inner Drone. Can you describe it so listeners can picture it in their minds? The vehicle is an, an X-frame, so it's uh, typical of what you might see on a normal multi-rotor aircraft. And it currently has four large propellers on it uh, that are driven by electric motors. Then at the center of that X-frame is a body or a fuselage, not too unlike that of a bullet bike, a racing motorcycle, you know. And the rider sits prone on the aircraft, just like they would sit on a, a racing motorcycle. How big is it? Depending on where you measure it from, if you measured it from one arc of the propeller to the next arc of the propeller at the longest distance, it's about 14 feet. Can you share how it changed during the design process, going from the idea to what you have today? <laughs> design process, okay. Yeah, uh, it actually started way long ago. I, I've always had kind of a, an interest in personal flying vehicles and mostly just the smallest vehicle that you could create that could carry a person was originally my my interest. And I thought about that over the years, and I got into RC modeling. And uh, as a kid, I remember seeing like a P-51 that someone had built, and they put a small child in there. Obviously, they were, they were just doing it for the picture, and it was just for fun. But it has always intrigued me to take the smallest feature set and make a person fly. And so I guess that's where the design process began. And then I got into multi-rotors. I first saw one online, and the only way to have one was to build one. So I built one, and it was amazing the interest that people had. People would literally stop their cars when I would fly it, and they would come up and, wow, what is that? I've never seen anything like that before. So from designing that uh, initial tricopter, I just started thinking, man, this is so scalable and there are a lot of different things that could be done. One of the first things I thought was someone needs to commercialize that. And obviously that happened rather quickly and DJI led that charge. Pretty soon I just kind of got fed up with uh, sitting on the sidelines and I started thinking of the potential issues that multi-rotors still face. And part of that was that when a traditional multi-copter travels forward, it travels forward with a negative angle of attack. And I thought, geez, there's a simple solution for that. And so then I started designing something with a minimum feature set to fly a person and something that embodied these improvements that I saw from a hardware perspective. So I was looking at wings and not flying at a negative angle of attack. It's a process that goes through many, many, many iterations. So I think if you looked at my computer, the version number is somewhere probably uh, in the hundreds. And then after designing what we thought would be a good concept, and then we would find holes in that and then go back and revisit it and redefine the mission a little bit. Through all that process, it just kind of led to where we are. I, I would say it, the look has changed significantly but it does retain the same basic principles that were originally embodied in the uh, original design. How long have you been working on it? Yeah, I would say that we've been building this one for about a year and a half. And as I understand it, just before Inner Drone, you had its first successful test flight. That's right. So we got it off the ground and that was our intent. We just did a quick tethered flight just to say that we've, we've gotten it off the ground. And that was what was important to us. But we had a lot of things that we knew we were going to have to address before we could call it full flight ready and, and so forth. We're just beginning that uh, flight testing phase. What's happened since Interdrone? Uh, we've had a lot of great connections at Interdrone, which have led to a lot of interesting conversations. And we don't have anything solid. We haven't signed any papers, I guess you could say. 
but uh, we, we are still definitely looking for financing. We're moving forward with our testing phase and we've made a lot of really great connections that are helping with the design and build process as well as uh, the testing grounds. We'll be testing at the new Deseret UAS testing facility, which is going to be really amazing. What do you see as the key challenges that lie ahead? So far, one of the challenges has been just trying to keep up with the speed of the market. It's amazing what's going on right now. It used to be that there were maybe half a dozen to a, a dozen competitors out there that were really working towards something real. And now that number has quadrupled and the speed and the fundraising that is going into these projects is just really amazing. And so if you're not fast, you're last. What's the status of your funding? Currently, we are minimally funded internally, generally, and we have some sponsorship that is also done well for us. Who is the initial ideal target customer for the Electrofly? Obviously, there's uh, kind of the package delivery that a lot of people see is like the first hurdle that the FAA is going to acquiesce to, if you want to call it that. The first thing that they think will get approved is the package delivery. And there are some estimates that large part of the drone market, as much as 80% of the drone market, will be used for package delivery in the next coming years here. And we think that based on the fact that the Electrofly technology is organized and built to improve the efficiency of drones and multi-rotors that move forward and drones that need to carry more weight, we think we're ideally suited for that package delivery market. But I would say that that's not our primary focus. The other use that uh, we're seeing a lot of attention in is the air taxi market. And there's certainly a lot of competitors that are jumping into that. But what we've also seen is that in that market, in the air taxi market, there's a few things that are happening. Either A, they're just taking like the technology of a small drone, like if you can imagine like a Phantom 4, and just blowing that up into an air taxi size. That's what some of the early entrants into that market have done. And then the other competitors within that air taxi market have taken the idea of fusing wings into multi-rotors, but they've done that in really random ways in many cases where you're almost taking like a multi-rotor aircraft and an airplane in another hand, and you're just cramming them together. And it ends up being neither a good airplane nor a good multi-rotor. We feel like our technology will be fundamentally a breakthrough in the air taxi market. And uh, finally, in terms of uses, I think that military is certainly an obvious application for the Electrofly. If you can imagine the problem the U.S. military has had where they send in a special forces team in a helicopter, either a Chinook or a Blackhawk or something like that, and they get shot down, which happens frequently. And when that happens, not only do you lose the whole SEAL team, but you also lose a pilot and an aircraft. The Electrofly, because of its ease of operation, you really don't need a pilot to fly it. You know, in terms of stability and wind correction and all those things that pilots are trained to do, we've now software that out of the equation. And so it's really a matter of just up is up, down is down, left is left, and right is right. And so you could teach special forces operators how to fly this thing. And if you can decentralize the travelability of your special forces, then you're all of a sudden entering this whole new world where that situation with the Blackhawk or the Chinook and getting you, losing your team all at once, that no longer applies if you had a, a team that was flying Electroflies. So I think that those are the primary uses, the package delivery, the air taxis, and the military. When you get into package delivery, will the drone still be piloted by someone? The package delivery side, if we were to build an aircraft suited for package delivery, you would you would have to do it unmanned. Uh, okay. There's no way to be competitive in that market and carry extra weight. So for package delivery, it would it would be a scaled down version that would operate autonomously. And uh, there is work to be done in the autonomous operation market. But if you can use the operation philosophies that are currently 
in use in the in the commercial aviation market, we could have autonomous operation with existing technologies. How much will it carry? Uh, well, the whole design criteria is basically the weight of the aircraft, the weight of the fuel, either batteries or actual fuel, and also the weight of the pilot. And so those are the operational requirements that we're trying to fulfill. And we're too early to say exactly what kind of flight times we're getting, but we would like to keep that in like the 30 minute range. So in essence, there may be different sizes for different missions and weights. Absolutely. So that's one of the interesting things going on in the drone market right now is that so many people are trying to build this Swiss army knife, one size fits all that fits every mission. And the aviation market is just not designed that way. It's a very energy intensive and energy critical situation. And so you really have to design an aircraft that's suited for the mission that you're trying to fulfill. So that comes back to that uh, question about package delivery. You really can't afford to carry a person when all you're doing is carrying a box. That's really no savings over what the current delivery system is designed to do where you're driving around a Mack truck for a box. It doesn't make sense and it won't make sense moving forward in the drone market. Getting back to the personal flying machine, how small do you think it can get? Right now, what we're trying to do is build the minimum feature set. And that's a good question. I think that we're going to find that that minimum feature set going forward. But as we like to say, we're currently we're building the Model T and we're working toward building the Ferrari. So our size, we're probably a little bit larger than we need to be. Some of the things that we consider, though, is the fact that we have very large propellers out on the end of that arm spinning around and we don't want the pilot in a position to touch those. So that that would be one of the considerations that we had on size. But the, the way we have uh, the drone market moving forward, I think we'll condense size going forward in the next few years, and we'll also shave off a lot of weight, which will translate into a smaller size. I'd like to talk a little about the business side of things. For starters, how did the business evolve? Basically, we got the start off of uh, that, uh, that initial multi-rotor that I built all those years ago. And uh, I continued to build them and continued to try and iterate and do things that I wanted to do. One of my good friends who is now one of the co-founders, Jason Burgess, he, he was looking at some of the things that I was doing and working on. And he was getting excited about that and saw some of the potential and his job in life is to take ideas and find funding for them and take it to market. And that's exactly what he is doing with us now at Electrofly. We also have a uh, patent attorney who got on early on and he was able to start with a patent application that was legitimate. And so it was almost like we were able to build the foundation of the company before moving into prototypes and everything else, which is somewhat backward to the way it happens frequently in a lot of startups. And so we had a really good business backing before we started moving into the prototype. And I think that idea, that concept and that energy just kind of took hold within people who could envision the future here and they wanted to be a part of it. So, you know, the team went from the original three and then just kind of added one and one and one here and there to where we are now, where we've got a lot of people who are consulting and adding value where they can. What advice would you give to other entrepreneurs? Oof, that's a tough one. Uh, I think I'm pro it's probably too early for me to be qualified to answer that question. So what are the next steps for the Electrofly? We will be at CES in January. We're currently working with Desert UAS, and we have a busy schedule trying to get flights crammed in and switching parts over to our new milled parts. So that's what's been taking our time. And we also have a number of uh, things going on on the paperwork side of the house. It's just all consuming right now. I'm curious, what's it been like for you personally, starting from an idea many years ago to today and actually seeing the Electrofly take to the air? Where we were to where we are, it's a dream come true. It just absolutely could not be going any better. It's a realization of a lifetime of work and I feel fortunate and lucky and I pinch myself every morning 
And I work days and nights and weekends on it, and I am happy to do it. It's unbelievable. It's a blessing. That sounds cool. Is there anything that we missed? Uh, well, we will be at uh, Deseret UAS for their grand opening on the uh, 24th of October. For those that may not know, what is Deseret UAS? Brand new testing site for uh, unmanned aerial systems. It's going to be an amazing opportunity, and we're going to be right in the shadow of it. So it's oh. going to be great. And for my final question, John, what message would you like to leave listeners in regard to the Electrofly and its potential impact on the industry? With respect to where you were saying where we are and where we've been and how that's affected me personally, it has been an exercise of following your dreams. It's been an unbelievable ride, and I'm so happy to be a part of it. Electrofly is, is not just existing technology wrapped in a different package. This is a whole new breed of aircraft that will allow us to move into longer flying times and, and larger payloads. 99% of the drones out there are either built to carry sensors that look an awful lot like a camera or a camera itself. Electrofly gives us the opportunity to do something meaningful with drones, which is carry a meaningful load like a package or a person for the first time reliably. So we're really excited about creating a whole new industry that has the potential of making drones ubiquitous. That's it for episode 181 of the Drone Radio Show. I hope you enjoyed hearing from John Manning of Electrofly. I want to thank John for taking the time to speak with me. If you want to learn more about Electrofly or want to connect with John, check out the webpage at electrofly.com. If you like the Drone Radio Show, please consider supporting the podcast with a small donation. The content is always free, but for as little as $1, you can help defray the cost of production. To donate, go to droneradioshow.com slash donate or patreon.com slash drone radio show. And thanks for listening. Your support means a lot to me, and I hope you'll listen to more episodes of the Drone Radio Show podcast to hear how others are using drones for business, fun, and research. For the Drone Radio Show, I'm Randy Gores. This has been the Drone Radio Show podcast. More information on today's show can be found on our website at www.droneradioshow.com. If you're using drone technology for business, fun, or research, and would like to share your experience on the show, please visit our website and fill out a guest appearance application. And don't forget to follow us on your favorite social media channels. Thank you.